All right, so let's look at this problem. <clears throat> this is kind of tying it all together. This is a um, uh, shear moment diagram with bending stress and normal st and shear stress. All right, so first, let's draw the shear moment diagrams. Then we'll calculate the normal stress and shear stress at a certain point, right? So at this point B right here, um, and at this cross section as if we were to cut it right here. All right, so shear for the shear moment diagram, I need to find A, Y, and B, Y. Since this is on video, we've got time. Uh, we can calculate. Let, let's do our statics. And let's sum the moments about A. <clears throat> All right, so this would be 18 is acting 4 away, creating a negative moment. Um, and this distributed load, I would like to replace it with it's uniform with a 28 kilonewton force. <clears throat> 28 kilonewton force acting 16 away from A, creating a negative moment. But then BY is positive moment acting 18 away. Sum those to zero. I would get BY 28.89 kilonewtons. And then come and use that to sum the forces in Y. AY minus 18 minus 28 plus 28.89. <clears throat> I would get AY 17.11 kilonewtons right there. So my shear diagram. First thing that I, I see is I, I go straight up to 17.11. Then nothing happens. Then I go down by 18. So I'm down here at negative 0.89. Might should keep <coughs> might should keep a few more um, significant digits. Then I get to right here, and then I go uh, linearly down by twenty eight. So I'm at negative twenty eight point eight nine. Oh yeah, and awesome, good. That works out because the last thing I jumped up to zero. So there's my shear diagram, my moment diagram. Looking for three things. I'm looking for a, an applied, an external moment, a moment that's just drawn on there, or mo maybe a moment at a wall. That would jump my moment diagram straight up or straight down. I don't have that. <clears throat> so the other two things I'm looking for is the area under the shear, and V is the slope of M. So this goes up. This is a positive area. That area is base times height, a base of 4, height of 17, Point one one. This goes up to sixty four point one or sixty four, sorry, sixty eight point four four. Let's try this sixty eight point four four, and it goes linearly because v is the slope of m. Then it goes down <coughs> by that area. That area is would bring me to fifty nine point five four. Um, and then it goes down, right, negative because these are under the curve. Uh, then it goes down by that area, and I bet, and hopefully, that area is equal to 59.54. Maybe a tiny bit off due to rounding. Um, and it would go <clears throat> with this shape um, because V is a slope of M. Because um, it starts with a slope of negative 0.89. It ends with a steeper negative slope of 28.89. So that would be my shear moment diagram, labeling all important points. <clears throat> okay, then I'm gonna ask you for the shear stress and the bending stress. Um, I might ask, hey, what's the maximum shear stress? What's the maximum bending stress? So if I was asking for the maximum, I would take that one and use that for VQ over IT. And I would know that the maximum shear stress occurs at the neutral axis. Um, but that's not what I'm asking. If I was asking for the maximum bending stress, I'd take that one, my over I, and I know the maximum bending stress occurs either at the top or the bottom. If it's symmetric, the top and the bottom are the same value. One is just compression, one is just um, tension. All right, but it doesn't ask that. It asks for a specific point. It asks for a specific point. It's, it says to cut it right here and look at point B. So cut it right here and look at point B. Now before I get too far, uh, let me go ahead and calculate the I. Let me go ahead and calculate the I, because I'm gonna use it for VQ over IT and for MY over I. 
So for this shape, I'm lucky that it is symmetric. It is symmetric, so I know the neutral axis is right down the middle. <clears throat> so the I about the neutral axis would be, uh, I'm going to think about this as a solid pink rectangle minus these two green rectangles. So that pink rectangle would be 1 12th B, let's see, H cubed, but then minus uh, 1 12th. Each of these rectangles has a base of, if I look at this, I've got 12.5 as the base. Do you see that? And the height of 50 cubed. Um, and then there are two of those rectangles. So my I, 8.83 times 10 to the 5th millimeters to the 4th. All right, 8.83 times 10 to the 5th. Okay, so what is my VQ over IT at this location that I'm interested in? All right, the V would be 0.89. <clears throat> it's, it's telling me to cut it right here, cut it right here. Just to the left, right? This is 0.89 um, kilonewton. Let's think about this. I think these were all units, kilonewtons. These were kilonewton meters. Be careful right there. Uh, 0.89 kilonewtons. Do you, do you mind if I go ahead and change to 890? 890, 890 newtons. Q, all right, so Q for this point B, Q is Y bar prime A prime. Um, the A prime would be this area below here, this area away from the neutral axis, upside down T, this area of T. <coughs> Remember that it's, it's helpful to take these and break them up into two rectangles. So I'm going to do this as two rectangles, the y bar prime a prime of that first rectangle right here, the y bar prime a prime of that bottom rectangle right here. All right, so the y bar prime, I'll come back to the a prime. It is an area of 15, a base of 15, height of 10, and the y bar prime, let's see, I need to go... <clears throat> Let's see about this here. I need to go, that dimension is 50, uh, so that dimension is 25. All right, I need to go 15 just to get to point B. I need to go 15 millimeters just to get to point B, but then another five millimeters to get past it to the centroid, so that's gonna be 20. My Y bar prime would be 20, all right? But then also I've got this area right here. Its area would be base times height, and it's y bar prime. Let's see. I need to go 25 just to get to that area, and then another 5, so 30, is going to be my um, y bar prime for that <coughs> area. So what do we do? Q is y bar prime a prime. But I, I just broke it up into the Y bar prime A prime of one shape, the Y bar prime A prime of the other. <clears throat> All right, divided by I of 8.83 times 10 to the 5. And the thickness at this location was 15 millimeters. Everything's in newtons, everything's in millimeters. I've got newtons per millimeter squared. 1.01 MPA. 1.01 MPA is the shear stress at that location at point B. All right, now let's do MY over I. The moment at that point is 59.54 kilonewton meters. Hmm. We'll handle that in just a second. The Y... The Y for point B, let me throw everything else. The Y for point B is different from the Y bar prime. The Y is just the distance to the point. In the MY over I, the Y is just the distance to the point. So this would just be, if this is 25 from there to there, this would just be 
15, 15 millimeters. And then the I, 8.83 times 10 to the 5 millimeters to the 4th. Uh, I like newtons, so I'm going to change that kilonewtons to newtons. I multiply it times 1,000. Uh, but I also, everything needs to be in millimeters, so I'm multiplying it times 1,000 twice in order to get <clears throat> 1,011 MPA. Now, I need to specify compression or tension. I need to specify compression or tension. Uh, this is a positive moment, and a positive moment would, would turn my um, beam or my um, pool noodle into a smiley face. And for a smiley face, on the bottom half of that, uh, it would be tension. Right? The bottom half of that would be tension. The book would have you say this is negative my over I. But this 15 right here would be negative because it's below. And so that negative and that negative would get, lead you to a positive, positive is tension. So step, take a step back and look back at this. Got to do the statics right. Got to draw the shear moment diagram right. Then find the shear stress at this location. Find the bending stress at this location. Be sure you can find the, the eye for different shapes. And be sure you understand the difference <clears throat> this Q is Y bar prime A prime. Uh, this Y is different from the Y bar prime. The Y inside the MY over I is different from the Y bar prime inside the Q. <clears throat> and for this one, it's helpful to think about that Q as two separate Y bar prime A primes.